we have Jed Assam from the University of South Dakota. The title of his talk is Hydrogel Intraocular Lens Calcification Pathology, a Hard Case. All right, well, good morning, everybody. I have the uh, privilege of presenting a presentation uh, with Developmental Systems by Dr. Mamlis as well as Dr. Wern this morning. And it will be discussing some of the a case highlighting the pathology of hydrophilic acrylic lens calcification and hopefully help to provide you a uh, validation for considering this uh, uncommon but important pathology when evaluating pseudophagic patients with decreased visual acuity. So as an overview, some of the items that we're going to be talking about today with this presentation include the case of calcification itself, as well as some of the benefits and drawbacks of utilizing uh, hydrophilic acrylic lenses, some of the history of hydrophilic acrylic lens calcification, as well as mechanisms and risk factors, and finally, trying to tie in a clinical relevance case example. All right, so in providing our case, we have a 72-year-old female that presented to the clinic who was left eye dominant. The chief complaint was uh, blurry vision. The patient indicated a past history for the blurry vision of gradual diminishing vision over the course of two years, which had become more noticeable over the course of the last six months. The past medical history, past surgical history was significant for a prior cataract extraction bilaterally with a posterior interocular lens placement of a three-piece hydrophilic acrylic known as the memory lens. The patient also had a significant history for YAG capsulotomy of the right eye. There was no significant history for any context lens wear or prior refractive surgery. <coughs> Objective findings in the uh, patient follow-up or in the patient exam included a normal finding on external exam. Slit lamp examination was pertinent for bilateral pinguecula as well as identification of a right eye calcification, severely calcified interocular lens, and a finding of posterior vitreal detachment in the left eye. The fundal examination was normal in the left eye with uh, normal retinal findings, and the right eye was unappreciable due to the presence of a highly calcified interocular lens. Baseline testing did reveal a depreciated visual acuity in the right eye to 2400, and in the left eye it was normal at 2020. There was a slightly elevated pressure noted in the left eye at 21, and then a normal within normal limits for the left eye. The image provided uh, demonstrates a great example of a dilated exam showing an optic surface with good uh, presence of calcification on the lens demonstrated by the red highlight. This would have been a good example of what would have been clinically identified in our case. As an assessment, the patient was found to have a calcified interocular lens of the right eye. Decision was made for surgical interocular lens exchange with the placement of an anterior chamber lens, the L122 by Bosch and Loam. The reason for selection of an anterior chamber lens in this particular case was due to the fact of the need to remove the capsular bag due to loss of integrity from prior capsulotomy, as well as noted patient intolerance of continued procedure for the placement of a posterior sutural ILL. Patient follow-up demonstrated on day one a expected decrease in visual acuity, in this case to hand motion. However, as we continue to follow up the patient case throughout the course of the week, we do notice that there was a gradual increase in visual acuity, uh, increasing to 2200 in the right eye on the third day and then by one week to 2060. Throughout the course of follow-up, the interocular pressure was noted to remain stable for this particular patient. Pathological findings from the extracted interocular lens demonstrated a uh, diffuse deposition both on the anterior and posterior surfaces of the lens with granular deposits which was also positive with an alizarin red stain, which is significant for demonstrating the presence of calcium within the deposit. The images above show on the left an example of the diffuse calcification that was observed in our particular interocular lens. Uh, you can see the uh, dense coarse deposits, and then if we look at the image on the right, you can see a comparison of the stained half of the lens demonstrating uh, good uptake in the granules to demonstrate the presence of calcium contrasted with the lower segment which is unstained in this particular case. 
So, having gone through a case of interactive lens calcification with uh, hydrophilic acrylic, what are some of the benefits and drawbacks to the use of this particular lens type? The benefits have included a uh, noted high uveal biocompatibility, which translates to a lower inflammation in the post-operative period. Additionally, the flexible nature of this particular lens type allows it to be highly foldable, which is very ideal for use in small incision cataract surgery. Some of the drawbacks to the lens use include a relatively poor capsular biocompatibility, which translates to an increased risk for the development of things such as posterior capsular opacity with epithelial capsule migration. Additionally, interocular lens opacification, as was discussed in our particular case, is also a concern for this particular lens type. As well, there is a high Yeag rate that has been associated with this particular lens due to not only the poor capsular compatibility, but also to the misinterpretation of findings on clinical exam, in which case a patient might have a calcified interocular lens, whereas uh, the clinician might very well jump immediately to the assumption that they have a posterior capsular opacity and pursue on a Yeag procedure. So, the background history, uh, brief history on hydrophilic acrylic lens calcification. Overall, for purposes of lens exchange for hydrophilic acrylics, the uh, sequela of opacification is the most common reason for needing to do a lens exchange in this particular type. Of opacification causes, calcification does represent the most common uh, source for opacification in hydrophilic acrylic lenses. Another cause would include um, stainings from a uh, capsular such as hydro, uh, the tetraline blue. Additionally, uh, for calcification, there is calcification that occurs by primary causes as well as secondary causes, primary specifically referring to lens calcification occurring as a result of defect on the lens surface itself, secondary occurring as a result of calcification due to environmental fa factors, which we will go over in the following slide. Some other historical models of interest that would be uh, valuable to be aware of that have undergone calcification previously include the Hydroview by Bausch and Lohm, the AquaSense, as well as the SC60B, OEV from medical development. Uh, in our particular case, we did have a memory lens calcification. So, for the pathophysiology of hydrophilic acrylic lens calcification, it is noted to be a multifactorial event. Of the known factors that have been considered for causes of calcification, the chief cause of primary calcification in a hydrophilic acrylic lens has been noted to be the increased surface ionization energy potential caused by exposure of a hydrophilic acrylic lens surface to the physiological pH of the aqueous humor, which predisposes to the precipitation of calcium from the aqueous humor. Secondary causes, which include the environmental factors that we discussed, include conditions that can increase the calcium level within the aqueous humor. This includes things such as metabolic and ocular conditions, inclusive of diabetes with associated diabetic retinopathy, as well as renal disease failure, as well as parathyroid abnormalities. Other items include surgical procedures, which increase the inflammation and also disrupt the blood aqueous barrier as well as surgical adjuvants, which include things such as silicone oil, air, gas, as well as tissue plasminogen activator used to decrease fibrosis of interocular lenses. So in having discussed some of the history, as well as mechanisms and risk factors associated with hydrophilic acrylic interocular lens calcification, what I'm hoping to present to you in this slide is to provide a uh, valuation for why considering this uncommon but important pathology is in critical in a differential diagnosis for decreased visual acuity in pseudophagicaceous patients. In the image on the left, we see a interocular lens calcification, which was demonstrated earlier in our case, contrasted with a posterior capsular opacity case on the left or your right. From these two images, the close similarity can be easily identified how this could be on a rapid clinical examination misinterpreted in a case of interocular lens calcification as a posterior capsular opacity, which would then predispose the patient to undergoing a unnecessary Yeag capsulotomy, which predisposes the patient to not only increase financial burden 
as well as the risk of undergoing the procedure, but also increases the risk associated with the eventual lens exchange that will be necessary to resolve the problem of interocular lens calcification. With that, I would like to briefly review some of the items that we've gone over throughout this presentation. We've done a case review of calcified interocular lens. We've undergone some of the benefits and drawbacks to the use of hydrophilic acrylic interocular lenses, some of the history of the calcification of hydrophilic acrylics, mechanisms as well as risk factors, and then also provided a clinical correlation to consider. With that, I would like to make acknowledgments to the following individuals for their assistance in the development of this presentation case. These are some of my resources. And with that, I would like to take any questions. Yeah, that was a nicely done talk on the calcification of these implants. Because these were so rarely used, especially in this area, we just don't see these often. And I think it's critical that people have a high index of suspicion. And the one point that, that we'd like everybody to take away from this talk is, if you see someone where you look at them and there's an opacity, you say, oh, it's PCO, and then just jump in to do the ad. Look closely. It just takes a little bit of a longer look because the opacification is definitely different. When you look at these, these implants are calcified both on the anterior and the posterior surface. So it's not in the lens capsule itself. And then people will just jump in immediately into a YAG laser capsulotomy. Once you do that, the degree of difficulty in explaining these lenses goes way up. And your risk of a vitreous coming forward, risk of not being able to put an implant back in the capsule bag goes way up. So take an extra few seconds, and when you see some PCO that just doesn't look right, and maybe that should, should light something up that says, look closer and see if it's really PCO or if it's the implant itself, because we just don't see these very often anymore here. I mean, this was taken off the market, um, you know, almost 20 years ago, and so we just don't see these very often. But if you see some funny PCO, look, look carefully at it and make sure you're dealing with PCO rather than with the calcified that well. Thank you for that, Mr. Stack Mammals. Uh, Dr. Warren? So just to complement what we said, uh, those four major designs that you mentioned, indeed, you almost do not see that anymore because many of those lenses were explained and we analyzed many of them. But just to follow the attention of what we are seeing now a lot in the laboratory. So if you have, even in this country, a patient with a hydrogen or hydrophilic acrylic in the eye, and then this patient requires a procedure such as the MAC, the SAC, you know, procedures using trachemal injection of air, or also a uh, vitrectomy, a lot of retina surgery, it's a silicone oil or gas or something. This is what we're seeing uh, in terms of calcification. So then these lenses calcify the pupillary or natural area, and they require explantation. And this problem is not being related to one particular design, it's being related to any kind of hydrophilic lenses. And uh, some papers are coming up showing that the risk that you have a patient with hydrophilic and that patient under, undergo the SAG or the MAG or such procedures, the risk is 10% to calcification, which is actually quite high. Thank you, Dr. Warren. Uh, any other questions at this time?